Hey, so I'm Officer Miller. I work with Wasilla Police Department. I'm a school resource officer for Colony High, Colony Middle School, and Valley Pathways. Uh, we're going to go over digital citizenship. This uh, Glenn Klinkhart is a uh, used to be a detective with APD for a really long time. Uh, and it says, today we are more likely to spend time looking at our phones than looking inside ourselves. Online life. Using the internet safety safely and responsibly is important because it is a big part of our lives. Uh, and what, some, what are some of the things that you guys do online? If nobody raises their hands, I will call on people, yeah. Snap people, okay. TikTok. TikTok. Shopping. Shopping. Yeah. All right, yeah. Stupid internet trends. Stupid internet trends, yes. Like we were discussing earlier, right? Um, other things that people do online, right? Uh, play video games. Um, post images, view videos, go to webs different websites, Pinterest, uh, Instagram, YouTube. Uh, I'm going to sound old. Facebook, I don't think that's even a thing anymore. Um, Google, you guys use Google for research for homework, right? Yeah. We do a lot of things online, Amazon, all that kind of stuff. We talk to family and friends. We learned last year and the year before online. We learned last year and the year before online for school. It sucks, but it is a way of doing school. What are some risky behaviors? Do you guys know what risky behavior means? Online risky behavior. Sending me to rude messages. Sharing inappropriate photos. Talking about adult subjects and visiting adult websites. Okay? While these behaviors might not sound risky, each of them can contribute to getting you in or your friends in trouble and putting you in danger. These are all risks that you don't have to take, so you should choose to protect yourself and avoid them. What do you think you'd get in trouble for? Cyberbullying. Cyber yep, absolutely. Yes. Breaking the law. Breaking the law, yes. Like the trend that's going on. Devious licks, right? They're breaking the law. They're vandalizing the bathrooms, which is criminal mischief. Uh, sending nude or inappropriate photos. That's actually a crime. It's actually a felony. Um, having them on your phone is actually a crime. Different things like that, guys. So, posting these things, right? You're going to potentially ruin your reputation because you're talking smack over the internet to other people, right? People aren't going to like you if you do that. Um, you're going to get in trouble with your school, your parents, or potentially law enforcement, me. Um, and then people can find this online. Uh, employers can use this as a reason not to hire someone or not to go forward with offering that particular person a job. Uh, I know in my job, when I got hired, I had to give all my passwords to my social media accounts uh, to my investigator so that he could look through all of that to see what kind of person I am. Because they need to know that I'm the type of person that's going to represent Wasilla Police Department with the utmost respect. Okay? Um, examples of some of these. So, two students at a high school in Lower 48 were suspended after posting homecoming pictures of themselves holding replica guns. Even though each of these, even though the guns were not real, as school officials, uh, school officials considered the photos to have significant disruption of the school. Two teenagers in uh, Georgia were suspended after posting this principal's mugshot on Instagram and claiming that she was arrested uh, on suspicion of drinking and driving. She was actually arrested for speeding. More than 100 people in Tennessee at a high school were suspended after showing a video of students uh, swearing that was posted on YouTube. And then a 17-year-old was uh, fired from his job at the sandwich shop after posting racist tweets. So what you guys do online impacts your everyday life and could impact your jobs, it could impact your um, school life, okay? And then it also represents your parents because you guys are adult, you're not adults yet, you're not on your own. You still, like, you still have parents that you're responsible for. And if you're a well-known person or your parents are well-known, well then it shows that 
your parents allow this behavior to happen and it gives them a bad reputation as well, okay? A good, a good question to always ask, guys, is would my parents, my relatives, or my coaches, or someone in my life that I know, love, and trust think that this is appropriate? Um, a good old age added is, would this go on grandma's fridge? And if you would not send this to your grandma or post it on her fridge because you're proud of it, it's probably something that doesn't belong on social media. Information can spread quickly and to lots of people. People, um, it could be people that you don't want it to and it's permanent. I know that Snapchat's whole like, claim to fame uh, is that it goes away, right? It disappears after it's done or reviewed or whatever the case is. Yeah, it's not. Um, there, it's always saved on some server somewhere or somebody's video recorded it on their phone or figured out how to pull it back from the lost interwebs or whatever the case is, right? So, and you guys like, you were talking about the devious licks. It's obviously spread. You guys know about it. It's happening in this school, right? Does, has everybody known what's happening in this school with the devious licks? Raise your hand if you do know about it. Okay. 25% of the class roughly. Okay. Maybe 50% of the class. So it spreads quick, right? It made national headline news yesterday. And I think it was just on, it was just going for one day or, uh, before it made that, okay? Personal information is also, like you have to be aware of what information that you share online and how much of that information that you share. Your, if you're posting home address or your cell phone numbers or your, the location, if you're sharing your location, um, those are all information that people can use. So think about how much information you're comfortable sharing online. Are you the person that posts up to 12 times a day or 12 times a year? No matter what type of person you are, you should carefully think about the personal information you're sharing online. It's not that you should never share information, but there's a lot of great legitimate websites that require it, but once that information is out there, it's always out there and you lose control of it. You don't have the ability to control where that information goes and how it goes. A couple examples. A uh, 14-year-old English girl posted details about her birthday party online uh, to later find out that 800 people crashed the birthday party that were not invited and caused over $40,000 worth of damage to her parents' home. A uh, 17-year-old student in Minnesota was playing a game on Facebook uh, which asked her to fill out loan applications for extra points. The teenager was later uh, contacted by a caller dealership to discuss her application for a loan for a car. And she was just on Facebook doing things so she could get extra credit on a game that she was playing. So gotta be careful, guys. If it sounds too good to be true online, it probably is, and I would not go forward with it. I get a lot of phone calls about stuff that sounds too good to be true, um, and I even helped or I even had to fil like filter a phone call from a 92-year-old lady who had lost $120,000 because of an online scam. So it's not just reading stuff um, on, the, on this to you know, sound cool, but it's actually like it's stuff that I've dealt with too in real life. Okay, um, have different passwords for each account. Use your privacy settings. Remember who your friends are. Uh, limit your access to your location. Uh, look at the lock symbol and the HTTPS. Um, don't share others. Don't share others' personal information. And don't share passwords. All right, fun stuff, right? Not really, but sexting. It's happening. It's a real thing. You guys, everybody know what sexting is? Yes. Okay. Um, Sexting is a way that teens share inappropriate information. Sexting is the sharing of nude or suggestive photos and videos through text messages. Although some research suggests that only 2.5% of teens are sexting, stories about it have been all over the news. You may know people yourselves um, that have been asked to do it. Uh, teens who get involved in sexting are usually joking around with friends in a relationship with a boyfriend or girlfriend um, or flirting or trying to impress someone. Getting a request uh, to sex might, f uh, or yeah, sex is, it might feel uh, flattering because um, uh, it means that somebody thinks that you're attractive. 
Um, it might make you feel angry because somebody is asking you to do something so private, and it might make you feel pressured um, if a girlfriend or a boyfriend um, are trying to get you to do something that you don't necessarily want to do. Okay. Photo fake. Um, I think this next slide is going to be a video. If it works, um, it'd be great. But this is uh, a video. Um, I want you guys to think about how the girl feels in this video um, while the video is playing, okay? So I don't know if anybody saw it, but her boyfriend's asking her for a nude photo, right? Or a hot pic, sorry, not a nude photo, but a hot pic. So, boyfriend received it, right? Now he's like, oh yeah, that's awesome, that's sweet. Should he share it with his friends, guys? No? Guess what? You guys don't have the choice. Is that of your control now that you sent this photo to him? Oh man, yo, send that to me real quick. I'm not gonna, come on, send that to me. I don't know if you guys can hear this or not. So now he's asking, or now his friends are asking, hey, should I send it? Or send it to me. I won't share it with nobody, right? Man, you a pimp. Yo, you a pimp. Look at you that, boys. Right. Check that out, boys. Oh, 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 I, 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 oh, I had to send this to Mark. Send that out now. So now everybody's getting it. You guys might be watching this thinking that this isn't legit or this doesn't happen. It does. Um, you might disagree with it, but it happens. It's a real thing. And it goes fast and it spreads fast. And you can even tell this video is old, right? They're using these weird like flip phones and like they have to like type three times to get one letter. Like this is, this is old school. So now mom got it. And some creeper in mom's basement got it. Revealing photos that get lost, misplaced online, passed around without the person's permission. It can be used as bullying, it can be used as blackmail, and get you in trouble, okay? So you've got a boyfriend, girlfriend now, right? You're dating someone, you're doing this, you're sending, but you break up, then what? Girlfriend's mad at you because you broke up with her, so she's like, hey, this guy's got a small woo-hoo, and I want to share it with everyone, right? Because it's going to make everyone in the school make fun of him, right? I mean, everybody in here is laughing about that. So what would you think that would be a one way to get back at the boyfriend for breaking up? It's not a way to get, no, it's, it's not right. It's childish. So think about that, guys. That's, I mean, that's what it means, the blackmail, right? And it can get you in trouble. These are actually crimes that are committed. Any picture depicting, uh, and there, there's actual statute that states it, but any picture depicting, depicting uh, a an inappropriate part of the body is a crime. And that's one crime for every photo. 10 photos on your phone, 10 crimes. Send it to 100 people, 100 crimes right there. Okay, so it's actually a serious, legitimate issue and it's taken very seriously in the state of Alaska. Kind of going back to what you want on grandma's um, fridge, right? Don't take photos of yourself that you wouldn't want um, everyone to see. Um, don't forward anyone else's photos. Uh, don't ask um, or pressure anyone into sharing photos with you and talk to an adult, okay? If you guys are getting these photos and then you're also distributing them, you're also part of the problem. But if you get them and you stop it from happening, my suggestion is delete it immediately so it stops the spread of it. And then come talk to someone. Myself, Ms. Raines, Mr. O'Neill, Mr. Lincoln, Mr. McMahon. If you don't feel comfortable with any of those, your counselors. Okay, or a trusted adult, someone that you feel comfortable talking to.
because this stuff is harmful towards others. And don't ask anyone to share images. Um, don't pressure someone into doing it. Um, it's just, especially someone you care about. It's not something that should be um, talked about um, or, or done. Talk to somebody, right? You can file a complaint. Guess what, guys? Anything that comes to me, anybody that talks to me about something that's going on in the school, completely anonymous. I don't tell even Mr. O'Neill or Mr. McMahon, Ms. Link, uh, Mr. Lincoln, uh, or Ms. Rains, who shares the information with me. They don't need to know it. They just need to know that I got information that they want, and I share it with them, and they're supposed to handle that information. It doesn't matter who it comes from, okay? So that's uh, just as a peace of mind for, for you guys, if you guys ever wanted to talk to me. Cyberbullying, okay? Um, this is, the, I think, the last thing. Yep, the last thing that we're going to discuss um, is one of many that many of you are probably aware of, cyberbullying. Cyberbullying is the use of technology to bully someone. Some examples are creating a hate group um, that talks about somebody, posting mean comments online, photoshopping uh, someone's photo to embarrass them, recording a post and posting a fight, uh, sheesh, can't read today, sorry guys, uh, recording and posting uh, fight videos, spreading rumors and gossip through text messages, um, and stealing someone identify, identity and creating a fake profile. Uh, some of these things may seem more like jokes or pranks than bullying to you, but even if um, you did not intend to hurt someone, um, you probably still are, okay? Uh, if you are being cyberbullied, I may feel like there's nothing you can do, but it isn't true. Here are some steps to take. Um, don't respond, okay? If I come over here and I'm picking on your teacher, right? I'm sitting there poking him over and over and over again. He keeps slapping me. <laughs> I'm annoying him, okay? And I'm bugging him. If I'm sitting here annoying him and he's paying attention to me annoying him, it's going to make it worse. I'm just going to keep doing it and doing it and doing it. But if, I, if he ignores me, then I'm going to get bored because it's not interesting anymore. So just ignore it. Don't respond, okay? Block them. Block the person that's bullying you on... I mean, I, I don't know how Snapchat works, guys. I'm sorry. I don't have Snapchat. Um, I barely use my Instagram account. Um, so if there's a way to block people on Snapchat... Is there a way to block somebody on Snapchat? Yeah. Okay. Block them. Stops it from happening. It stops you from seeing it. At least, it doesn't, maybe it doesn't stop it from happening, but at least you're not um, seeing it and it's not coming to your phone all the time. Text messages, phone numbers can be blocked, okay? Um, there's options on websites to block stuff. There's options with cell phone providers, okay? Um, set up a new account, make something new. Only contact people that you trust and that you know to be a part of it and don't um, friend people that you don't know. Um, and then you can always talk to me, make a report, talk to a trusted adult. Um, and tell them what's going on so that we, we can help it. Um, the school's got a great thing in place for no contact contracts. Um, it essentially states that um, the two people that are having problems with each other aren't allowed to talk to anyone, um, each other anymore. And they're not allowed to talk, have their friends talk to them for them. Um, so it's an it's a easy way to get contact to stop that we don't want to continue happening. Um, some teams, uh, teens don't want to talk to an adult if they're being cyberbullied. They may worry um, they'll be told to stay offline or think that an adult can't help. But adults can be very helpful with dealing with cyberbullying. They can help um, you set up new accounts. Well, okay, I can't because I don't know anything about Snapchat. Sorry, guys. Um, but um, they can provide you information with setting up new accounts. Um, They can decide that if, if you need to save the messages for later reporting. Um, and then they can always talk to the school um, or even the classmate to see if there's something that they can work out, right? Um, working with law enforcement, if the bullies are threatening to harm you, um, have it reported to me or law enforcement if it's happening outside of school. Um, it's, it's something that is also a crime. Harassment is a crime, okay? 
Um, and then we can just be here to listen. Sometimes you guys just need to get it off your chest that it's happening. You don't necessarily need any or, or want any help or you know solving the problem, but it's always good to talk to someone just so they can hear and listen to you, okay? Um, if you aren't being bullied, you may know someone who is experiencing it. Online, there are often many bystanders, people who see the bullying happening but aren't involved. Bystanders may want to help um, but are often afraid um, that the bully will turn on them, they will be labeled a snitch, um, and they will say things um, or saying that something worse will happen, saying something will make the bullying worse. Bystanders are important. They can help bring cyberbullying to an end by making it clear that uh, bullying behaviors won't be tolerated in their schools and their friend groups. If you are comfortable standing up uh, to a bully, um, then try the following steps. So don't, uh, don't engage the bully's bullying behavior. For example, don't like or share the mean posts or comments. Don't participate in the bullying just to fit in. Stand up for the victim. If you can offer support through actions, such as sending a friendly text message or making a positive post on their page or walking that with them uh, in the hallway or report it. Uh, report it to counselors or me or teachers or something else, okay? Don't feed the cyber bullies. Sometimes people feel like they have good reasons to cyber bully someone, like if the person has been bullied themselves a cyberbully situation can easily get out of control and you don't know what could happen. Remember, even though you're being behind a screen, you're talking to real people. Uh, just because you can't see their reactions doesn't mean that you're not hurting them. Imagine how those comments would make you feel. If you're tempered to cyberbullying, remember while you don't have to like everyone, uh, you can keep critical comments to yourself or tempted, sorry, if you're tempted to cyberbully someone. Uh, you don't have to like everyone, but you don't have to post about everyone either. Don't forward rumors or embarrassing photos. Uh, and you don't have to comment on insulting or harassing posts. Instead of cyberbullying, focus on creating a better online environment and treating others with respect. Suggested resources. Um, you may want to review the school's rules about bullying and online harassment um, and its specific consequences. Uh, I'm sure there's, you guys have your student handbooks that you know how you're, what's some of the behaviors and actions you're supposed to have in school. Okay, some examples from Florida. Uh, teenagers were charged with aggravated stalking of a minor under 16 after they set, set up a fake profile uh, for a classmate. They had altered images to make her look like she was engaged in sexual acts. 20 high school students in Oregon were suspended after tweeting and retweeting that a teacher at their school flirts with students. And middle schoolers in California were investigated by law enforcement for allegedly hacking into a classmate's Instagram account and placing sexually derogatory comments on it. Creating a positive online environment. Some people think that um, think that what they do online is separate from their real lives because it's easy to behind a, hide behind a screen. But as we've seen today, um, and what we do online matters and offline matters. Make choice to create a safe and positive um, on and off environment, or on and offline environment at school and with your friends by being careful about what you share, not cyberbullying or encouraging it, and not asking or pressuring anyone into sharing inappropriate con um, content, reporting inappropriate behavior. Most importantly, don't forget to communicate with adults you trust about what you do online. You don't have to wait for something too bad to happen. Take the lead and show them all uh, the way that you are responsible um, online. Always think before you hit send, and always keep it light, bright, and polite. <laughs>